From burgers to burritos, sandwiches to sushi, not to mention myriad versions of perfect fried chicken, there's a staggering choice of fast food dining options on our high streets. So, question. Could there possibly be a gap in what appears to be an oversaturated market? Our next entrepreneurs believe they found one. Good afternoon, Dragons. My name is Tayyub Mushtaq. I'm the Managing Director of World Gourmet Restaurants Limited, owners and operators of the brand Wrap It Up. I'm here today seeking an investment of £500,000 for an exchange of 11% equity in our business. My name is Afnan Bashir and I am a co-founder of Wrap It Up. Back in 2003, when I was living in Chicago, I began to notice this emerging trend in the eating out um, sector called fast casual, which basically sits in between fast food and casual dining. Our research suggested that a lot of the authentic street food from around the world is served in a wrap form. Hence, we created a brand based on world gourmet wraps. The current UK sandwich market is worth over £6 billion, of which wraps account for around 4%. This is around £250 million per year and growing year on year. What a market, what an opportunity. Should we come and look at your wraps now? Yeah, please. Yes. Please. Yes. Guys, why don't you come round here? A composed pitch from Tayyab and Afnan, who are seeking the hefty half million pound investment that could transform their handful of high end takeaways into a household name. It's hot. It's going to take something special for the Dragons to buy into, wrap it up, at the company's current valuation. Deborah Meaden is the first to question the fast food entrepreneurs. I've been spending quite some time sitting with a food industry expert who we were only last week talking about wraps being the next big thing. This is a space that's open and it's up for grabs. Yep. Um, the question is, why is it going to be you that's going to win this space? When, when I created the brand, uh, we wanted to or create, recreate sort of authentic street food from around the world. That's, that's where the idea came from. So street food's all about good quality. It's all about preparing it in front of the customer when they're, you know, it's all about drama and theatre. Everybody else will serve wraps, but they won't serve it in that way. It's a positive start, with the entrepreneurs displaying a real passion for their business. But Piers Linney seems to have something on his mind. I eat this stuff all the time. Within 20 metres of my desk, there must be 12 to 13 businesses selling this kind of food or variation on the theme. You've mixed together, the, you know, this world food, whereas everybody else does seem to pigeonhole themselves in, you know, Caribbean or Mexican, whatever it might be. That's the whole idea of wrap it up. You can come into our stores and choose a wrap from nearly every continent in the world. You tell me where else you'll go and you'll find a roti sat next to a burrito, sat next to an Indian tandoori tikka. Could Tayyab and Afnan have spotted a lucrative niche in the highly competitive takeaway market? Duncan Bannatyne is eager to find out more about Wrap It Up's financial performance. How much money did it turn over in 2010? £680,000. And what profit did it make? Net profit of £47,000. 2011, what was your turnover and net profit? £980,000 with a net profit of £110,000. 2012? Turnover of £1.3 million with a net profit of £180,000. And projected turnover for this year is £1.8 million with a net profit of £250,000. A solid set of numbers confidently delivered. But it's left the Dragons confused about why Tayyab and Afnan are asking for an investment at all. So, now, if you're making £250,000 a year, yeah. why do you need to raise any money, let alone 500000 We have one central kitchen, which is 
absolutely at maximum capacity. There is no way we can service any further stores without expanding our central kitchen facility. Isn't this a debt deal? I mean, I know the banks aren't quite as uh, yep, we're, friendly we're, as they used to yep, be, but like, this is a t typical debt situation for expansion. Though I'm here for the money, I'm more after your expertise and taking this business uh, globally. I see Wrap It Up as something that can sit alongside the big brands. Tayyab certainly has no shortage of ambition, and Peter Jones appears impressed by the detailed grasp he has of his business. Tayyab, you, you present really well. You clearly know your numbers, um, which is refreshing, actually. When you spend 100 hours in the business every week, week in, week out, you know what you're paying for. Yeah. And, if you and that's the me, reason why this business is And if you tell me you're 23 now, then... Sorry? How old are you? I'm uh, 30 years of age. 30? Yeah. yeah. Now, I can tell you're working hard, because you look older than that. It's made you ill, hasn't it? I literally lost my hair. I had a alopecia for two years. But since I've had my first child, I've taken a step back and I've thought, you know what, it's not just about work and it's not just about business. It's about family. It's about making sure now, you know, family comes first. And, you know, I've taken yeah. time out. I've taken... You're you know, still working 100 hours a week? No, no, no. Since October 12, I've had a management team put in place and I've literally allowed myself to take the business forward as opposed to being involved in the nitty-gritty. By delegating the day-to-day -day management of the business, Tayeb has allayed the dragon's anxieties about his health. However, design guru Kelly Hoppen is concerned by Wrap It Up's lack of visual appeal. When you go to Thailand, you go to Mexico, it's all very beautiful, it's very colourful. This, to me, just looks like I'm driving along on the motorway and it's a fast food... So, like, the, the brand image at all? The brand to, image. To, to some extent, I completely agree. And to add to that point, let me tell you, over the last three years, I've spent not a penny in marketing, branding. Part of the, those funds, if, if they're invested, will be used towards improving our brand image. But I thought we, it was we, for kitchens that yeah, you said you The £500,000 will be split around 250 k for our central kitchen and an allocation of around 30 to 40 k to get some brand, branding agencies in to come and revitalise and reignite the brand. You're in the throes of growing a business. Perhaps you can fix the branding. The name's not too bad. I think the valuation, though, is bonkers. Despite Tayab's obvious entrepreneurial zeal, the mood in the den has taken a darker turn. Duncan Bannatyne is also concerned by the high valuation the duo have attached to their business. My head isn't calculating a value in this business of 500,000 for 11%. We've taken that based on a multiple of 1.7 on our sales and added a premium in there for the fact that we're growing business. Literally, we've scratched the surface. So we feel that if I was to sell this business today, I'm quite confident that I could achieve £4 million. I would value the company. Maybe it's three, maybe it's four times profit. So that's 600, 800,000. And you're asking for £500,000 for 11%. You're taking a multiple of three times. Yeah, that's the price. And this doesn't give me a good enough return to value the whole thing enough to invest £500,000. And for that reason, I'm out. OK. Thank you. With one dragon already having walked away from the deal, will Deborah Meaden and Piers Linney also be deterred by Wrap It Up's £4 million price tag? A business would have to have something that absolutely the only way of me to enter that market was via that business for me to pay the kind of multiples that you're asking for. You've got a business that I could go out tomorrow, put a team together and do. So I am really sorry, but I'm out. I'm not afraid of buying companies with five times revenue, quite frank. Um, the the reason you'll do that is about growth, isn't it? It's growth. If you're going from 1.8 to 5 to 10 to 20 to 30 to 50 million in revenue, that's when you valued at five times revenue. So on, on that basis, it's not for me. I'm out. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Three dragons have now bowed out, and Tayab and Afnan's chances of securing an investment rest with Kelly Hoppen and Peter Jones. Something needs to wow me, you know? That's the first thing, the smell and then the sight, and then it's talking. And I didn't get that. It's not wowing me. Um, I'm sorry, but I won't be investing, and I'm out. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.
the opportunity in terms of investment at 500k for 11 percent is about as attractive as eating a rotten egg okay fair enough fair enough you should have come in at a realistic level to get the one person that can turn this into something into something special but i'm not going to invest today and i'm out thank you very much thank you very much brother. Despite a promising initial pitch, Tyab and Afnan are leaving empty-handed. Their valuation of the business's overall worth having effectively scuppered their chances of dragon investment. Given the business that we operate and, and, and the market we're in, we were quite, in my opinion, realistic on valuations. You've really got to believe in, in, in the brand and, or in the content and be passionate about it as an investor. And I just don't think the Dragons... They didn't come as today. passion, yeah. passionate. So I don't think they understood the business as we would have liked them to.